Okay. That's a bit earlier than what, what I've been expecting, but anyway. How do I do this? Okay. Um, so I'm uh, Chris Woodrow, I'm a developer. I uh, mostly work with uh, Java, JavaScript, and Python. Uh, so a bit of funny stuff. And uh, I'm uh, pretty fond of uh, data. I've uh, been working with uh, data, lots of data store and stuff like that. I work at Naive. Uh, Naive is an insurance company, mutual insurance company. And we'll be talking about that a bit later. I, uh, I, um, I'm working on the OSS, uh, Maif, uh, Maif uh, OSS um, initiative. We'll be a lot talking about that. I love rock and roll, and uh, my uh, Twitter ID is strange cousin, but <coughs> I uh, really don't often speak about uh, IT, so just if you have time to waste. Um, so, uh, what's a mutual insurance company? Um, oh, okay, less ugly than here. It's good, I'm, good news. Um, we've been created in 1934, so that's quite a long time, eight, eight four years ago. And um, we've been created in uh, uh, west of France, in Fontenay-le-Comte, and uh, uh, the, the, mo the main idea was to provide some insurance to uh, um, teachers that didn't want to uh, to uh, go with uh, um, professional traditional insurance. Uh, the, the, the MVP was uh, um, uh, automotive, uh, uh, automotive insurance. So, uh, and then we got further and bigger and bigger. Um, our key values in 1934 were independence, so I guess you understood why. Disintermediation, we just wanted to uh, to uh, get rid of all intermediates that could kind of uh, take some money or just because they are intermediates, solidarity. As soon as you kind of uh, uh, pay all together for one person, I guess you um, need to be to have some solidarity. And then responsibility, that's the same kind of, uh, same kind of matter. Then now we are kind of entreprise à mission. I have no idea how to translate that in English. Um, in, Fran in France, when you talk about entreprise à mission, it's kind of a private company who is doing some public service. So uh, that's what we are kind of. And um, we support innovation a lot. That, uh, that means that we invent, invest in startups on about privacy topics and uh, um, share economy topics too. And uh, we have quite strong and opinionated uh, digital charts. And we uh, kind of uh, uh, are very, uh, very hard about uh, um, uh, privacy and uh, self data. And then finally, we, uh, we, we are quite a lot in uh, open source. That's not that historical because we are quite a lot of legacy. But in, recently, in the last 20 years, we've been doing a lot of open source. Um, everything starts with the uh, digital transformation matter. Um, thing is, when you are an insurance company, and especially when you are quite an old insurance company, you just think that if you are uh, if you have some self-driving cars, uh, connected houses, connected people, I mean bracelets and stuff like that, you have much less risk than what you, you could have. Um, so you have much less things to insure. And uh, our CEO, Pascal de Murger, um, told us that, that they, they wanted to, to make some change about that and to, to diversify our activity. So um, in 20... 2016, at the time, they, they, they asked us to, uh, to, uh, to do something about that and to be able to um, kind of uh, uh, build up some platform, technical platform, to, uh, to be able to, uh, to do some, some new stuff. And the, the, the order at the, at, the, at the beginning was quite technical. At the end, we um, sort of uh, went on a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, 
a vision which was not only technical. It's quite important for us because we think that that change didn't involve only technical stuff. I mean, technical is something you can use, but not, some, not the ending point. So uh, we built a deck of cards. Deck of cards was uh, kind of uh, five topics. Um, the, uh, there was a technical topic, but also to topic about API, talk about, topic about time to market, topic about humans, because human is quite a center of all things, and uh, topic about, uh, topic about uh, user experience, which is something which is quite important for us. And the, the, by the way, this deck of cards is now a Creative Commons, so you can find it on our GitHub. Um, so, in uh, big early uh, 2017, the, uh, the MAVE board said, okay, you've been sort of telling us what we should do, so uh, let's, let's do it. And then you, you just can do whatever you want to do. And you can sort of, um, you choose about your weapons, and uh, then you can, uh, you can go on. So um, we, we went on, and about uh, five months later, we had an MVP. We were hosting on a public cloud, which was quite innovative for a company like us. Um, it's, it's Clever Cloud. I don't know if anyone knows Clever Cloud. I guess some people know Clever Cloud. And uh, uh, Clever, Clever Cloud guys are um, speaking, talking in, in, the, in, the, in these days. So uh, you may find some Clever, Clever Cloud guys. So um, our MVP was based on public markets um, products and also of uh, tailor-made stuff. So uh, that's what we are going to talk right now. Um, first, um, uh, open. I mean, first uh, product was project. I would say was uh, Otoroshi. Uh, okay, we uh, kind of uh, give uh, Japanese names to all our stuff. There's no real reason why. Maybe a late night in a Japanese restaurant. But uh, anyway, Otoroshi is the reverse proxy. So um, it's quite. Uh, uh, APA management, but very lightweight, but I'll explain the reasons why it's quite lightweight, on top of a HTTP mod mod modern reverse proxy. So, uh, um, what you can do with Otoroshi is uh, handle inter-microservices communication. Um, it needed to be hot configurable, because we wanted to be able to, uh, to, uh, to give a lot of change to our to our products, and uh, we need it to be uh, productive and uh, to be able to uh, kind of uh, um, uh, build applications quickly and get something which is very uh, well understandable for a developer. And we wanted to be to get some a lot of uh, features that you could find in uh, uh, any reverse proxy or API management, and. Um, I want it to be quite uh, stack or technology agnostic. So uh, we uh, find that, wh why did we build Otoroshi? Because at that time, we, uh, every, f every um, product we found on the market was not that what we were looking for. Um, uh, quick glance, architecture looks something like that. Um, it's uh, sort of uh, every, every request gets through Otoroshi. We don't uh, let microservices uh, communicate together through uh, any, um, any kernel which is not uh, Otoroshi. And uh, but Otoroshi is a uh, service, not a single point of failure. You can get some uh, high availability and get something which works uh, quite well and, and which is scalable. Um, Basically, it looks like something like that. You get some Otoroshi, you sort of uh, declare the endpoints you want to expose to the world, and then uh, you can sort of uh, declare, point these endpoints to uh, any features, which are any, any instances which are in public clouds or wherever, even your own stuff. And um, we, uh, we also uh, uh, record some analytics very frequently. I mean, that's quite systematic. That's that what makes the system auditable. Um, we uh, we also uh, have uh, um, 
very strong uh, design, uh, um, very strong design uh, um, engagement on, uh, we, I mean, thing is, uh, usually when you use a, a product like, which you, like. you want to integrate it with uh, um, any kind of, uh, uh, any kind of uh, building tool or whatever, you, uh, you like it when you click and then you cannot get some very interesting stuff because you, uh, everything is not uh, APIs. So we, the thing is, uh, our design rule is whatever you can do with the UI, you need to be able to do it with the API. So uh, it's uh, API, API-ized uh, API management tool. Um, we handle some throttling quotas. We, uh, so you can define the, whatever number of requests you can perform for per year, per second, per month, per whatever. Uh, we handle bas basic metrics. So uh, um, you are kind of, uh, you get some metrics to know whatever kind of calls you can make so you can sort of uh, see what's going on quite quickly. And moreover, we have Elastic Stack, which uh, provides us some uh, very, very uh, complete metrics. So additional metrics, you can build your own dashboard whenever you want. Um, we use the JWT validation token. So uh, you can provide some private key or certificate so that we are able to uh, uh, validate tokens in the, uh, in, the, in the endpoint of the API. You can, we have a uh, chaos engineering. Um, we are quite like the uh, Netflix uh, Semian army. So uh, as we thought it was quite a good idea, we wanted to be able to do some chaos-ish engineering in, uh, in Otoroshi. That means we, uh, we wanted to um, be able to make some very long, very huge requests to know what's going on, very, very hard, very long time to respond and stuff like that. In production, we use it, uh, I mean, we don't use it in production, we use it in uh, other environments. But we, we, th we are thinking about using it in production just to know what's going on when things don't go as you expected. Um, Autoroshi so is suitable for um, uh, exposing services. We, we provide the API exposition, but we also provide some B2C, some static stuff exposition. You can hide your, your website behind Autoroshi. Um, handle some very uh, chaotic uh, world into a single tool, so uh, you uh, can sort of, uh, um, you, we wanted to, uh, to get some uh, microservices which would be uh, um, written in many languages. We have uh, Scala, Kotlin, P Python, uh, Java, uh, Node. We have very, a lot of languages, so we, we wanted to, to be able to manage them in single tool. Um, dynamic routing is quite a big, big, uh, big feature. And uh, um, we, uh, we also integrate uh, um, containers orchestrator like uh, Kubernetes and stuff like that. Uh, wanted also to uh, replace uh, Fatlib approach that is uh, uh, provided to you with uh, quite a lot of tools. And that's also the reason why we built something which was not uh, sort of uh, uh, techno-centric and centered on one particular technology. You uh, shouldn't use Otoroshi to replace your heavy load balancer. That's not a good idea, I think. Um, for static routing and load balancing, I mean, if you need the Nginx, just use Nginx. Um, we, uh, we don't provide some uh, root uh, resource finely grained API management. That's quite of, uh, uh, that's key point of design because we, um, we wanted the developer to be in full control of what was going on, especially in a, in a company like ours. Um, we, um, we needed to, uh, to, uh, to, to provide some, some control to developers. We wanted the developers to be able to, uh, to uh, I mean, we didn't want the configuration to be uh, hosted in two different ways, two different places, and by two different people. So uh, that's why we, uh, we have also uh, uh, another API management tool that, we, uh, that is configured by uh, people who, uh, 
who um, don't work with the people who developed, and that is a, quite such a source of problems. We don't want to transfer payloads for the same reason. We just don't want the logic and the, uh, the, um, the applicative code to be at the same place, uh, at different places. We, um, we don't do some URL rewriting stuff. And we, we didn't have all the bad ideas to, to show to you. So you might have good, good bad ideas to implement uh, Otoroshi. Uh, what's next? We are building uh, currently uh, an API portal that makes you uh, um, possible to uh, give, provide some documentation to uh, end users and developers to, uh, to get some API keys uh, handling and auto uh, generation. We want to provide a testing console so people just want to uh, to, uh, to tap the API before using it. Monetization, multi autoroshi clusters, and stuff like that. So we have quite a lot of stuff to do. Um, EasyEnemy is uh, another tool we've been uh, working on. Um, EasyEnemy is uh, A-B testing, feature flipping, configuration stuff. Um, I mean, project, okay. Um, so uh, after doing all these uh, automation work, we needed to, we thought that it would be a good idea to provide some feature flipping service. Um, who knows what's feature flipping? Okay. Um, uh, as a developer, I, I just, um, uh, usually people tell me, uh, you need to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to, to uh, push into production the new version of the application. So the um, thing I just don't want to do is waking up at three o'clock in the morning. Or, doing whatever I'm doing, anything else of whatever I'm doing. So um, the thing is, uh, feature flipping provides you the ability of uh, hot, uh, hot uh, toggling of features. You can activate, deactivate, enable, disable features uh, manually at the beginning, and then uh, uh, people from the uh, um, business owners and stuff like that, or delivery managers, uh, said they didn't want either to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to activate the button. So um, we uh, provided some scheduling, uh, enable scheduling, disable scheduling, some scripting. You can get some global scripting to provide some features to only a kind of, uh, of uh, users and stuff like that. Then we, um, the, the second uh, feature we provided to Izanami was uh, A-B testing. Uh, who knows what's A-B testing? A bit more, okay. Um, so uh, A-B testing is just sort of uh, two, uh, two um, versions of the same functionality, and you let the users decide what's the best version. So you decide a conversion metric. You say, okay, uh, if I A-B test a, a button, I get two versions of the button. I, I, I think that clicking is what gets me the conversion. And then you just provide uh, on whatever, whatever um, criteria the uh, one version or the other, and then you 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 measure the uh, the number of clicks, and then you decide which version you're going to push into production. Um, so you get okay that kind of stuff, which tells you uh, uh, gives you some metrics in the uh, in the period of time, and then you can de decide what uh, version you are going to use into a production. We also provide some A, B, C, whatever testing. Uh, uh, that's an example of what we've been providing by API but didn't provide by the UI. We uh, actually, we provided some A, B, whatever testing uh, till the beginning, but uh, we didn't want to do the, uh, the UI to, to do that. But finally, people were asking for it, so we, we kind of uh, developed it. We also provide some uh, shared configuration. That was uh, a third step about that. We, um, we thought that uh, it would be a good idea to, uh, to provide some uh, business configuration so people were, abel uh, were able to, uh, to set some uh, business configuration without uh, needing uh, some, some technical involvement. So, uh, for example, I mean, 
Uh, Monday, oh, we need three ties on the home page. Tuesday, four ties. Then uh, Wednesday, three ties. Okay. So we, we extract uh, the, uh, the configuration. And we provide them to the business, and they, they do whatever they want to do about that. Usually, there is always um, um, uh, someone who tries 25, where you provided something like between three and five, so to be to make fun, but whatever, it works quite well. Um, uh, in terms of architecture, it looks like that. Um, we have uh, uh, play, aka stuff to provide all the functionalities, data, st data store, and uh, event store, which provides events through uh, WebSocket or server sent event to microservices. So that you can get some uh, reactive functionality and behavior to make sure that whenever you change a feature, a future, uh, feature sorry, um, you are able to uh, get the change as soon as possible. In the concerned UI, um, we have quite a lot of integrations. Um, we have client integration. We have uh, front integration, Angular and React. We have also um, Scala, Java, and Node integration. We, we, I mean, we'd like to get some uh, decent PHP integration if anyone is interested about that. But we're <laughs> not very uh, good at that, and I, I'm sure we're going to do a crap, crap work. Um, just a bit of code, never bad. Um, that's an example of uh, what the feature client can provide you. So um, the, the, the name of the feature is uh, My TV Show Season Mark Has Watched. Uh, Mark Has Watched. And um, t uh, TV Show is our sort of uh, pet shop project for his enemy. Uh, you can find it on the, on the web. And uh, we... Uh, we, uh, so you, you get a client and uh, you implement both behaviors depending on whatever the feature, wh whenever the feature is, uh, is uh, enabled or disabled. Um, same thing in React. We, we like React a lot. And um, you get something like that. You see the feature. It's the same feature because usually you want to uh, duplicate the feature in the front end and the back end for a lot of reasons. Uh, front end for UX reasons and back end for security or integrity reasons. So um, you, uh, you you can provide some uh, the enable section, which is uh, the uh, what happens if the feature is enabled, and the disable se section, which only contains a empty div. So uh, we see we you don't get uh, a lot of a lot of the stuff here. Um, we want to grow because uh, um, at the end of that, about uh, a year, we went to see a uh, naive board, and uh, we, uh, we told them that we thought it could be a good idea to open source. So you just think about that. We, we seriously, th seriously think it was a good idea, but we seriously think uh, we, were going, we, were going to, to, uh, to, we are not going to get through. Um, just imagine the thing, you're going to see your CEO, and say, okay, the, <laughs> you know the stuff you've been paying a lot for, we're going to open source it. And, um, uh, and uh, it was not, not that expensive because uh, we are a six persons uh, team, so. And, um, and they, they, they agreed. <laughs> so that's quite, uh, quite nice, but in uh, January uh, 2018, we open sourced uh, the two projects we've been seeing, and we've been uh, sort of, uh, uh, giving them to a community, uh, and we've been giving a lot of projects uh, till then to community. Uh, here are five projects. Uh, Neo is uh, GDPR uh, uh, toolbox to implement GDPR. This is what we use in Naive to implement GDPR. Um, cards is the deck of cards we've been talking earlier, and. Uh, you don't get a printable version, but you get a web version that you can brute through. Get a very, uh, um, very tricky translations because we've been doing that a bit, uh, a bit quickly. So uh, that's it. And uh, let's automate is quite new. It's a service to uh, automate the uh, uh, let's encrypt uh, certificate renewal, especially on Clever for the the um, the the run and the 
OVH for the uh, uh, certificate, uh, uh, I mean the domain service. Um, I, I didn't translate that because uh, uh, I didn't know how to translate that. So I'm very sorry for non-speaking, non-French speaking people. Uh, globally, the uh, uh, CEO, D deputy CEO of Naif said uh, it was quite coherent um, to, uh, to uh, um, consistent, sorry, to, uh, to, to provide some, some components on the, uh, on the, of our new platform as uh, open source projects. So uh, they are very happy about that, and uh, Naif altogether is very happy about that. And we, uh, we are trying to get more and more into uh, open source. We uh, also participate a lot uh, to uh, PostgreSQL, and uh, we, uh, we just want to, uh, to uh, get this model very, uh, very um, concrete in the next few years. Uh, finally, in December 20. 2018, we won the uh, open source project of the year by uh, uh, CNLL, which is National Council of uh, uh, Free Software. So we are very happy about that. And we, um, we, are, we will be very um, pleased to share with you uh, whatever you want uh, about our open source uh, projects, about your open source projects, or about whatever you want to talk about. Thank you very much.